done a massive this morning, we've come down here to photograph uh, park deer. And the deer that are in this particular park are fallow deer. And although deer in a park might sound quite easy, they can be surprisingly difficult. So this is the gear that we're going to use this morning. It's the longest lens that I've got, it's 300mm lens with a 1.4 times converter. And though we might be able to get really quite close to the deer, I prefer to be further away. Uh, it's a digital camera on the back so that we can see the results that we've got. It's on a good firm tripod so that we don't get any camera shake. And I've got a cable release to fire the shutter so that we don't get any vibrations. So we're going to have a walk around the park now, see if we can find the deer, see how they're lying. We've had a wander around already and we've noticed one or two that are about so we know that they're here. And we'll try and really just look at the deer's behaviour and we'll take our cues from them. If they run away we'll leave them alone and then we'll come back to them at a later stage. If the letters approach closely then we'll get the pictures that we're after. It's, uh, it's now about quarter past seven so we're just waiting for the light to come in and we'll go and see if we can do some pictures. So what we're looking for here is just a telltale sign of a head poking up maybe underneath a branch to give us a quarry that we can actually start on stalking. And the way that we would try and do it in this particular park is once we've spotted a deer is walk up within about 100 metres of it and then see if we can settle ourselves be behind a tree. Let the deer settle and then move a little bit closer and see if it stays put. Right, we've got a group of deer just ahead of us. They're not in a particularly photographable area. But that doesn't matter for the time being. We're going to see if we can approach this group and uh, see how close they'll let us go. One thing that's important if you're approaching skittish animals like this is to actually be ready because you might only have a few seconds to take your picture. So in this particular light, it's still a little bit dull. I'm going to be setting the camera to ISO 400 and a maximum aperture of f4. That'll give me the best chance to get a sharp picture, even though I'm using the cable release and the tripod. So we're going to walk up to these now and, and see just how close the letters go. I'm expecting that they'll move off into the bracken on either the right or the left hand side, which is actually where I would prefer them to be. You'll get a much better picture that way. We'll just do it nice and easy, nice and gentle, and all the time we'll be watching the animals to see how they behave. If they show any sign of distress, then we'll leave them alone and look for a different group. Okay, you can see that we've been trying to move up this pathway here from the deer. Although they haven't run away, they're not particularly happy with us being here. Well, this is very, very open, and we've got the sky behind us, so we're very, very obvious. There's a group of deer about 100 metres away that are quite settled. But I'm planning an approach over that way now. You can see that I've got two trees and I've got a fallen log that we can creep up behind. So we're going to make an approach on them as quietly as we possibly can, see if we can get in close, see if we can get some pictures. So we've come up behind this tree so that it's breaking the power silhouette and we're just going to get down low and let him get used to us actually being here. Just let me take one or two pictures and he doesn't seem all that concerned about the camera just at the moment. If I did move out into this bracken, the chances are he's going to disappear. Now in actual fact with this long lens you can get really quite a nice framing using the tree to create a natural frame. So I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes just here to see if the light comes in and actually starts to light the deer because at the moment the grass around him is lit, the bracken's lit, but the deer's in the shadow, so it's not the best of pictures. But if you stay with an animal, the animal gets used to you being there. And it gets accustomed to your movements and your mannerisms and the camera, and then you can get closer and closer and closer. And in some ways, it's actually better to just try and find one animal to work with, rather than chase around after all sorts of different individuals. So we'll stay with this one for a few minutes and see what happens.
thing that you do have to watch out for if you're photographing deer in a park is the backgrounds. In this particular case, because of where we are and because of where the stag is, we can actually see some fencing behind the animal, which means that the shot isn't the most natural of looking shots. But rather than me move position, it might actually be better for me to wait and see if the animal moves into a better position first of all. Okay, so you can see what happened there. Moved out into the open and the stag was a little bit unsure about me being there, so I crouched down low, waited for a short while until he settled down. Then as I moved forward again, I obviously got too close for him and he was away. He hasn't disappeared completely, he's still just over there. But now it would be a mistake to carry on moving forward because he's obviously not all that comfortable with me being so close. Maybe later in the day he might be, but at the moment he isn't. So I'm going to respect the animal for that and move away and see if we can find some animals somewhere else. long shot or I want a portrait or I want them rutting but at the end of the day you get what the animals will let you get. You see here there's an ideal opportunity because of the way the light is that stag is completely dark and it would be pointless to try and photograph it to get the exposure accurate so what you do is you try and take it as a silhouette and frame it using the tree. 